Good morning, beloved. We have the Web Street boys visiting us here this morning. And uh, I just want to say thank you, uh, Matt, Will, Mark, and Johan, uh, for coming to visit us this, this morning. Uh, it's good to have your voices here to sing with us. Now, beloved, do you still remember that day when you were born again and you became a new creature? When you had a heart transplant, you just wanted to sing. He lives. Isn't that so? He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. off the rooftops. Isn't that so? Isn't that how you felt the day you committed your life to Christ? But maybe this is a far distant memory. Long time ago, because you allowed the small foxes to destroy your joy, your testimony, or maybe even allowed an idol that crept in and it became lethargic in your spiritual life. Is it time for some heart surgery, beloved? Let's turn to your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings and chapter 18. We're going to learn, read three verses there. From verse 19 to verse 21. 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 19 to 21. Have you all got it now? Let's start with verse 19. Now, therefore... Send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, 150 people, which eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, Listen to our promise today. How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. Look what the people did. They answered him, not a word. We have on Mount Carmel three kinds of people. First, we have the devoted servant of Jehovah, who is obviously uh, Elijah. On the other hand, we have the death of servants of Baal, the 450 prophets. But the majority of those were not fully determined who they want to worship. They want to worship Jehovah or Baal, the God of Jezebel. Baal was a fertility God. Doesn't look a very pleasant the figure there, as you can see, but by the way, did you know that a journalist found in 2016 that there are villages still in Syria where Baal is, is being worshipped to this day? The people of Israel had a tradition and served Jehovah, either secretly, half-heartedly, or not at all. They just had religion, a set of rules with no heart. As you know, a body with no heart is dead and ice cold. Now when the prophet Elijah spoke to the people of Israel, it was time of an immediate crisis. Sound familiar today? The crisis that time was great famine. The people wanted to please those who worshipped Baal, but it also had an idea of God based on their history. They wanted to please the world, but also at the same time, the true God, Jehovah. Now, when a person is freezing to death, he feels a pleasant numbness. And he doesn't want to end. 
It sounds weird, doesn't it? He just goes to sleep as he's freezing to death. Take note, they answered Elijah, not a word. But when heat is applied and the blood begins to rush through the veins, pain immediately occurs. Though it hurts, the pain is an indicator of a rescue and cure. The prophet turns the heat on and they become angry with him when he's working to try and help them. He is often accused of causing their pain. Sound familiar? You Christians are always causing problems. We can have a personal relationship with our Lord, just like a child with a parent. Sometimes we set up idols in our heart that get in the way of our relationship with God. You married men, what happens when you start looking at other women? What happens to your relationship with your wife? Come on, get real, people. Because an idol has set in. Let us have a look at some of these idols. Possible ones, I just gave a few examples here. First one is pride. We see proud people all the time. People who believe they don't need God or anyone else to run their lives. Even Christians who have put their trust in God for their eternity are sometimes too proud to allow Him to control their daily lives. Pride can manifest itself in many ways. Disobedience to authority is often a matter of pride. It's when you don't want others telling you how to live or run your life. Keep in mind that the letter I is in the center of the word pride. The first sin ever committed by Lucifer when he was thrown out of heaven. A second example of possible idol is self. Do you place your own needs and wants ahead of others or even when the, what the Lord wants you to do? Don't allow yourself or your, your own desires and plans to become an idol in your heart. Interesting again here is the letter I is also in the center of the word sin. Our third example of an idol is fear and worry. Yes, actually fear is another type of pride. Sometimes people hang on to their fears because it gives them comfort over what they can control. I'm not talking about phobias for real things, people. I'm speaking about refusing to step out in faith and follow the Lord. That is another attempt to control your own life and not allow the Lord to be in control. A fourth example is lust. So many people are addicted to lustful thoughts and actions. Jesus said if a man looks at a woman with lust in his heart, that is the same as adultery in the eyes of God. Lust is not always passive either, people. Some people present themselves in a way as to entice others. Ladies, you should take care of your body as it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But it should not be used to entice others into sinful thoughts and desires. Another one, a fifth example, is physical idols. Physical idols? Oh no, I have not any graven images in my house, you might say. Is that true? A physical idol would be anything that you spend time with and are not willing to give up serving the Lord, or something that distracts you from focusing on God. Young people, what kind of posters do you have up in your bedroom? You might really like a sports, sports star or entertainer. That's not necessarily wrong. However, as, has your mind become filled with their abilities more than your mind is focused on God? TV, social media, internet, your car or your job can also be a physical idol where people spend much more time worshipping that what it come, that comes through it and what they're thinking about God. What is it that the Lord is bringing to your mind with conviction right now? Is a question. Another example is entertainment. First of all, is your entertainment, your family's entertainment, God-honoring? If not, then that's a reason enough to step away from it. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Your music? Gossip? 
etc. There's a, certainly nothing inherently wrong with sports, gadgets or things like that. The problem comes when you place those things ahead of serving and obeying God. Did you spend $50 on a night out with mates but refuse to put $20 into the tithing box when God prompted you to actually do so? Let us search, as Amitation 3.40 says, and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us do as David said in Psalm 51, when he said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou might be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices, O God, are a broken spirit, a broken heart. And a contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Beloved, we have just heard God's requirements. Let us examine ourselves this morning. Do you possibly need a heart transplant? Someone else's healthy heart inside yours? Jesus Christ's heart? Do you know of a day that you gave your life to the Lord, repented and asked Him to wash away all your sins and make you a new person? If you have not committed your life to Jesus Christ yet, I urge you, do it today. Have a look at our Facebook posting of Where Will You Spend Eternity? Or feel free to contact us and we will gladly assist you in obtaining that assurance of salvation so that you may know that your name is written in the book of life forever. It is a personal matter between you and God. Nobody else can do it for you. Christian, do you possibly need heart surgery today to get rid of the blockages because you have been convicted? Your spiritual life could be at risk. You may have been silent in serving God, proper submarine, Christian, and allowed the world to take control of your life, one idol at a time. If that is you, beloved, come and sing this one verse, hymn together with us, called Coming Home, as a prayer to our Lord today. The words will be on your screen. May God help you. Amen. I've won.